a seat you get in the university. So right now, who does affirmative action help and who does it hurt, in your opinion? Primarily, um, the, the ones most impacted are in New York City's two most prestigious schools that are selected by uh, test scores only. Um, black and, and um, uh, Hispanics, about 32 students, 124 students for whites, and 620 students for Asians. Um, so these Asians, uh, most of them are from families that are like worked in restaurants. Uh, they're low income Asians. So they want to say, oh, 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 you Asians are doing too, too good uh, because you're studying hard, even though you come from absolute desperate conditions. We want to see your race. Then we'll tell you whether you get in these schools. Lakia, uh, your position and if you'd like to respond to anything that Jim said. Um. Race um, should not be the only factor. Um, we know that students need opportunity, they need access. And so affirmative action, even though it has been done away with here in Michigan, that has not stopped the University of Michigan and other schools from heavily recruiting because when you speak with students, they ask for diversity. Um, our students did not have the, an equal playing field. So this is why affirmative action is needed. Students do not have the same access or opportunities from school district to school district, especially right here in Michigan. You know, Jim, I uh, one thing about my job is as I travel and I, and I get out there and I do some hard stories, I do a lot of good ones, but I do a lot of hard stories. And you know, when you're driving through some of these neighborhoods in Detroit, it dawns on me, how does a kid in Detroit who, who lives in this environment get out of here don't you have to give some sort of advantage uh, help this kid along some way along the road to get to a Michigan to a Michigan State to a U of D don't you have to do something for that kid well, number one, your question begs the question that these are all black students in Detroit. That's simply not true. There's many white students in Detroit. Uh, outstate, there are rural areas <clears throat> that have very little resources, a fraction of the per pupil spending in the city of Detroit. So this I idea that everything Detroit is an example. Right. But you can use Detroit. So I use Detroit as an example. I mean, you can you can use any city you want. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, but it's not by race. There's there's absolutely impoverished whites. In Flint, in Detroit, and do those Pontiac. students get the same opportunities? When we talk about affirmative action, we're also talking about your economic background as well. And there, well, there is uh, a big push right now, and it's permissible under the law to be able to look at students' uh, economic background, where they're coming from, from uh, an impoverished background versus a very privileged background. Where per, that's permitted. Uh, what you cannot do is do this by race, and this is what Trump is targeting. He's not saying we're not going to allow you to look at the person's background in terms of are, do you come from an impoverished a background or a privileged background we're saying we're not going to permit you to look at the race show me your race and I'll show you your rights it was that's what he's trying to address Trump administration that initially said as recently as last week Jim that this was uh, to make sure that there was no reverse discrimination against white students white students specifically mentioned after that the narrative changed uh, to Asian students which many people are saying is some sort of a ploy uh, to, to hide the fact that it's really about the idea that somehow white uh, kids are, are being uh, mistreated here in some way. Either of you respond to that? Um, yes, um, vehemently. vehemently. I'm, I'm not surprised by anything coming from the Trump administration. He has attacked immigrants. He has attacked teachers. Um, so I'm not surprised. I, um, I think the White House right now and uh, many legislators are just curmudgeons at this point, just negative. Everything from a, uh, a deficit standpoint we have to look at the playing field. We have to look at students being able to take advanced placement courses and have those weighted GPAs. A lot of students in urban areas don't have that opportunity to take the advanced placement courses, to have the weighted GPAs, to be able to admit it to Michigan or, or Harvard or Princeton. Is there, is there do you believe, uh, support for this in, within the administration, within Washington, D.C.? Is there support for this? Or will, will this not fly? Much well, like well, the immigra well, immigration policy that rolled out, that's not going to happen. It's a great question. Will the elites, usually very privileged, living in isolation, in gated communities, in towers, even have a clue what we're talking about? Uh, they don't. And those are the people he deals with. Out in the, in the hinterlands where people actually deal with this on a day-by-day -day basis, enormous support. Uh, like you mentioned, it's not economics that he's saying, we, do, we don't want to give uh, a helping hand to somebody from a dis unprivileged background. 
we don't want this done by race because it cuts across all racial categories. The whole idea that it's just whites and just blacks in a very, very diverse country is preposterous. Um, the Nigerians that come here from Nigeria do vastly better than American blacks. Why is this? They come usually with much less money. They, they are coming to a brand new culture. From, um, they, uh, right now, one fourth of all Harvard Business uh, School um, uh, graduates and um, uh, 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 Harvard graduates and business school graduates in the black community, one fourth are Nigerians. They're not a fraction of that percent. I've got it right here, but mm-hmm. I'll show you as soon as the, the thing uh, yeah, like, shows yeah. over. Nigerians do vastly better, as do Jamaicans and American blacks. They come here with vastly less resources and do much, much better. It is cultural. I believe that it is the progressive liberal um, message that the Nigerians and the uh, Jamaicans are not getting, and they're getting the message, you come here, you can do and achieve anything, and they're doing extraordinarily well. I think that comes from years and years of systemic uh, discrimination in education. Um, We know that our urban schools suffer from lack of funding. Um, Trump's administration, the curmudgeons, they have recently cut $9.2 billion from education. We're talking about students that need resources now more than ever. I cannot believe that we're having this discussion that race does not matter when this country was built upon a huge race divide. It does matter. And our students need opportunity and access. You, you know, when, when I went to Michigan, one of the one of the great things about going to the University of Michigan was the diverse campus that I was on, and um, you know, it opened my eyes. I mean, I essentially went. My high school was all white. When I went to school, it, it was a learning experience yeah. for me. And I, I just think that it's it's not a bad thing to include everybody on a comp- college campus. And some people need a little help to get there. Yes. Mm. Well, no, nobody's going to argue that it's a bad thing to have diversity. Nobody. Uh, a little help to get there. When you're talking about uh, let me see your race and I'll show you your rights. You don't know anything about the average black or white person or Asian person that comes before you. You know nothing about them. You don't know the challenge. You don't say, oh, well, this person is this color. They've had no challenge. This person this color. Oh, they've had all the challenge in the world. You I simply don't idea, know. I think the though, more is not so much the let me to your race. It, a, the makeup of a school should have uh, a percentage of this, a percentage of that, so that everyone is getting the equal opportunity. But I also want to bring in the fact that affirmative action also helps women who are still making 70 cents to the dollar of what a man makes. If you do away with affirmative action, uh, do you have to do away with all of it? Uh, the the explosion of women going to college has, has been one of the great trends. Um, I but believe it's now, pay gap, I believe, well, what we're talking about with the Trump administration is with education. And he's talking about doing away with affirmative action. I believe there's now more um, a bachelor degree female grads than male grads and it has been an explosion uh, and it's not been due to f- affirmative action uh, the, this has been a, an ongoing trend that more and more females are going to college and are doing extremely well more are going to law school more are going to grad school um, and most of this is not done with uh, affirmative action they don't look at let me see your gender and then I'll tell you rights um, these things are happening across the country the trend lines are great in the states that uh, uh, look at a person on the basis of merit. I, don't work for you, I just want to say that um, women, especially white women, have benefited the most from affirmative action. Mm-hmm. So um, when we look at admission policies, we want to look at holistic policies. We want we want race to be a factor, yes, just as well as their leadership skills, just as well as their community service. So we can't just use test scores and grades. Uh- Thanks so much. Great discussion. We'll see how it all plays out. Uh, Never a dull moment in Washington, though. (laughs) Uh, That that is absolutely the case. But coming up after the break. That's right. We want you to be a part of the discussion as well, but don't forget to use the hashtag Let It Rip. All right, coming up, should the uh, NCAA pay college athletes? Share your thoughts on that. Another great discussion after the break. Yep, you may see your comment on the air at the end of the show. Be right back. You're saying that the man who spent years of running the FBI...
I got to deal with the consequences. And the consequences are no more college football. Since I can't play college football, no more scholarship. I'm ineligible. I can't pay for school. Damn. That's Donald De La Hay, a now former University of uh, Central Florida kicker, who was forced to choose between his playing uh, playing with his team or making money off his YouTube videos. The NCAA said he couldn't have both, but college athletes bring a lot of cash into their schools, so should they be paid? Here now with Rico Beard, my former radio partner, <laughs> uh, but now has his own show, The Spartan Beat. He covers college sports and says that athletes should be paid. Next to him, Mike Bernacki from the University of Detroit Mercy. He says uh, full scholarship room and board and allowance for books is enough and college athletes know what they're signing up for. So guys, I will come to you. Now this situation is a little bit different because the NCAA did grant him a waiver to make money on YouTube videos. However, he couldn't have athletic videos uh he, he couldn't he couldn't make football videos essentially so in essence the ncaa said you can make money so long as it we can't get, if we can't get a cut then you can't get a cut and that's what it came down to if you're doing anything athletic we want to share from it because the ncaa wants it all i don't see anything wrong with what this kid was doing and the fact that he had to choose is criminal because the ncaa doesn't share you know letter of intent and that is signed in the college athlete test, whether you're a place kicker or whatever you do. Well, th- well, that's just it, though. And every four years, and no one pays attention to what it. What is it? You do what the Olympics do. Athletes don't get, the American athletes, they do the Olympics for free, for pride of country. But if you happen to be that top gymnast and Wheaties wants to put you on their box, they can pay you. If you happen to be the Michael Phelps and Subway says, hey, you want on? Yes, they can pay you. But so then if you're top, the rest of the team as long as you raise your shirt, paid, no, but here's that's the not thing. fair. That's the American way. Those who are good get paid. Those who don't, don't. They work for those who get paid. Would the saying, American way be signing a contract and knowing yeah, what the obligation is? you sign is? a contract, you sign a contract. And that's what it should be all about. Now, you know, the guy is trying to uh, fund himself now. As a matter of fact, you know, he's collected, you know, poor me. And so he's collected something like $10,000 out of a $30,000 possibility. Okay. Florida is a fine institution, but it's not the University of Michigan. And this guy was a place kicker that we're talking about. He got a doggone good deal. That was a <laughs> wonderful place kicker. Come yeah. on. Let's oh, this be real. Why you got to say? We're going to continue this discussion. Whatever you're talking about.